Hi! <laughs> Woohoo! Tis the season for Phalaenopsis to spike if they happen to be blooming size, not in transition shock or otherwise stressed, possibly because of having to acclimate to a new environment. And of course, if you have one in bloom, this video may make you yawn because you already have your blooms, so happy days all around anyway. For me, this is always a very exciting season when it comes to Phalaenopsis because prior to uploading videos to my channel, I was really struggling to get them to grow well in my LECA and self-watering setup. Goodness me, if I had uploaded videos back in the day, you would hear the frustration in my voice compared to now. What you hear is relief and dare I say, confidence? <laughs> Anywho. Seeing as my Phalaenopsis collection has been glam camping all around the patio where the sun would not hit them directly, but as it started to drop based on the time of year, boo! The positive side of that is they got a lot more light than they will get for the coming six months once I have to bring them indoors because the night temperatures will get too chilly. Boo! <laughs> Sorry, you can tell I'm thrilled. <laughs> Moving on. Having them at eye level, I have been taking advantage of documenting their root growth and their spike progress, which I want to show you today. And should there ever be any doubt whether your fowl is spiking or growing a new root, I hope that this video will be able to answer your questions as you go around your collection, because I have so many variables to show you that are happening in my collection, which I want to share and that you can then look for similar examples for confirmation. I don't know about you, but even though I know that I won't be seeing any blooms for at least three months, the sooner I identify a spike, the longer I can watch it progress and enjoy the process. So, surprise, surprise, very fitting. The first image is of my rescue fowl suppressor. And here we have a phalaenopsis with green foliage, no anthocyanin, and I'm being specific about that because other examples will show why this is important when it comes to the distinction of spike versus root. So, Suppressor comes in with a perfect example that could be confusing because everything is green, but in this image there is a spike and at the same time a root, both growing out of a leaf joint. You see, this is where sometimes we have to get away from any golden rules that spikes grow from within leaf joints and roots grow out of the outer structure of the stem. In complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, there are no real golden rules. So have you been able to identify which is which in this image since I've been rattling on? <laughs> Here you can see there is a root to the left in a leaf joint, same area a spike can grow from because if you look to the right, that is a spike forming. Doesn't look like there's much to see here, but you can see clearly how much flatter the structure is at the tip and a lot more pointy as well compared to what the new root looks like at the end of its tip. There is no color difference to help us out in this example, so Looking for the difference in shape is a great way of identifying a new root as opposed to the development of a spike at such an early stage. A couple of days later, behold, <laughs> the root is starting to form the velamen. So that is confirmation that that was a root and the spike is now much clearer to determine. But <laughs> a second spike has joined the gaggle of activity around the stem of this fowl. It's a busy place at the moment. <laughs> the point in this example is, do not rely on the fact that only spikes grow out of the leaf joints. That root may find its way down into the media or it might choose to just continue growing along the surface of the leaf, making it an aerial root. But having had already two days in advance of more excitement than I would have had if I had not known the difference, the fact that there's a second spike now, <laughs> well, cartwheels around the patio. <laughs> but what I really want to avoid is any disappointment. Just because there's something growing in a leaf joint doesn't mean that it is a spike necessarily. So in our next example, we have a clear visual of the two ongoings happening out of the same leaf joint. But clearly there's a color difference. So in the previous example, everything was green. But here we have what and why. Well, to the left, we have a spike. Woohoo! <laughs> and to the right, we have a root. Woohoo! It's going to go aerial. Boo! Okay, that's not the point. 
As you see in this example, tinges of anthocyanin on the leaf structures, you would think that the spike should not be bright green. It would make more sense to have a green root tip and a dark spike. Or maybe that's just me. But as the spike is still shaded by other structures, it has not been exposed to that much light to make it show anthocyanin. It may produce some, but does not necessarily have to. However, the tender cells of the fresh spike may also remain green until the spike starts to elongate and the cells at the base harden off. The fact that the root tip is already showing anthocyanin is because of the nature of the orchid and not because it's had more light. That can also happen, but it is not necessarily always the case as you see in this example. All root tips on this orchid show this burgundy color. Even if they come out at the stem without having had any stronger light hit them. The point of this example is to show that not all root tips have to be green and not all spikes will come out to match the color of the root tip. Spikes may stay green even if the blooms are not white or they may change as they grow and become more exposed to light and mature. And here we are a couple of days later and the spike is starting to change color as it extends and starts to harden off and the root tip is still burgundy. How about this fine example? We have burgundy colored root tips and it helps to have a root that is already long enough to show us that there is one root growing out of the leaf joint along with two spikes on either side of the stem. Woohoo! Again! <laughs> the reason for this example is twofold to once again point out that the spike structures are flat at the tip. They taper off, as well as to confirm sooner than usual that we have two spikes. We don't have to wait for the so-called mitten shape of the spike to form at the tip, which will take a couple of days to take shape. So why wait? Seeing as the tapering off at the tip of the spike gives us confirmation straight away and also gives us more days to enjoy that our fowl is in spike. And not all spikes will show the thumb mitten shape that is often being referred to. In our next example, we have a clear visual of a spike, seeing as it has extended out from the leaf joint quite a bit already. But what is going on with that funny looking nubbin at the base of the stem? Let's look at it from the other side and it becomes clear that the nubbin is a root. <laughs> But what is going on to the left of the stem? We have a clear spike and then there's another structure growing underneath. Could it be a second spike forming at the same time? That can happen. But is that the case here or what is going on? These complex hybrids, I'm telling you, they keep the mind busy all the time, especially this time of year. The big reveal is one spike and one root tip but where is it coming from? This is an example of a root growing sideways within the leaf joint and choosing to come out where the spike is. Apparently for the root, that was the path of least resistance and only once the root started to grow in its girth did the leaf joint start to separate from the stem. This is a shame when this happens because now half of the leaf is not going to get any nutrients and it is detached from the plant and it may dry off prematurely. That will take some considerable time of course but still for the aesthetics of the orchid it's going to look unsightly for a while. This happens to be Aurora 3.0 but this is a classic example of all the variables that a complex Phalaenopsis hybrid has in its arsenal to have us going back time and time again so as to check out what is going on. I love it. <laughs> Anywho, two spikes on Aurora 3.0. It's going to be a fragrant bloom season and woohoo. <laughs> but wait, I have a few more examples. And if this video has been helpful so far, would you please do me a solid and hit the like button? Maybe even consider sharing it. It really helps the channel and I would so appreciate that. If you are not already subscribed, hitting the like button and the subscribe button doesn't even take a millisecond and won't interrupt the video. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And I thank you so much in advance. Moving on to the next example. How about a species Phalaenopsis? This is Phalaenopsis chileriana. Lots of good things going on at the base of this orchid. It makes me so happy to see this. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. <laughs> so what goodies are we looking at here? Lots of roots, but check out that structure to the right. No mitten. 
to confirm anything along the lines of a spike. So this example is to show you that you don't have to wait for any further confirmation that your orchid is in actual fact growing a spike because that structure to the right does not have any semblance of a mitten, but it is tapered off at the end. That, my fabulous Phalaenopsis friends, is a spike. I am going to hurt myself with all the cartwheels around the patio, but <laughs> here we are. This example also shows how similar in color the brand new spike nubbin is to the root nubbins, and yet it's a spike. Our next example though, clearly obvious as to what we are looking at. A root coming out of the stem and something that looks totally different from that root coming out of the stem to the left. So we can confirm that the thing growing out to the left is a spike. But wow, check it out. No mitten formation either. Like I said, why wait? Humor me for this example. <laughs> Even though I will end up repeating myself, I have to show you this stem because it's just so pretty. All of those lovely roots coming out of the stem. No mitten shape to be seen anywhere, but there's a spike. Can you already see it based on everything I've just mentioned previously? I can right out of the gate, even though it could be a root because it has a sheen to it. But the fact that it tapers out at the end, we can already be excited that Harlequin is growing a spike. Now, of course, I'm going to add here if I let her bloom out, <laughs> because that is something I will decide a little further down the line. However, for now, she is growing a spike and that is awesome. And you can see how similar it looks to the root. It even has a little gloss and sheen to it. So why wait until you see or don't see a mitten? You already know that is a spike simply by the way it tapers off at the tip. Do you want more? <laughs> I have a few more beautifully visually appealing examples to show you. Here's another one. Ooh, just look at what is going on with this lush stem. It's perfection just as it is, but what are we looking at? We've got roots growing out of leaf joints, literally left, right, and center, and then boom, a spike. This one takes the appearance of a burrito or a wrap of sorts. Oh, I just love this image. Okay, enough gawking, moving on. How about this example? Two structures just in their infancy, so to speak, both showing the same coloring, but one is shinier. That is clearly a root, but check out what is happening in the right leaf joint. No mitten. Hot kiss is growing a spike and we could already be all giddy about that because only a couple of days later did something happen along the lines of a mitten. I prefer to say burrito, a wrap kind of thing takes shape but we were already in the know and well happy days a few days ahead of time like I said why wait to confirm if your phalaenopsis is growing a spike or not we don't have to just check the shape of the end of a nubbin whether it is tapered at the end or a little bit more rounded mitten burrito or wrap doesn't matter it'll tell you very very clearly there is a marginal difference in its shape at every tip just one more for good measure because honestly, this for me, sorry, is so much fun. Seeing as I struggled to grow my fowls in Lekka and self-watering for so many years, I'm just having a blast seeing everything doing so well and the spike season is well and truly underway and I hope for you too, if you are growing your orchids in the hemisphere that I am growing them in. So here is the easiest example of all, but it is so pretty as well as spike no other interferences growing from a leaf joint that one was easy peasy but that also my fabulous phalaenopsis friends is a wrap not done with the video yet but a wrap as in no mitten to be seen anywhere it's still a spike this video was mainly to show you so many variables of a spike versus a root when it just barely makes an appearance from either a leaf joint or the stem, especially from a leaf joint, because again, the roots don't just come out of the rounded part of the stem. They are now also coming out of leaf joints. And also, I don't want this video to sound as if I'm gonna let all my Phalaenopsis bloom out as the winter progresses and the conditions in my climate degrade, I'm gonna make that decision on a Phalaenopsis by Phalaenopsis basis because the health of the orchid at the end of the day comes first. 
And I'm still actually anticipating and hoping that others would spike as well. <laughs> but anyway, I sincerely hope that this video gave you inspiration to not wait to see some kind of a mitten take shape at the end of a structure around your Phalaenopsis stem or within the leaf joints, but buy yourself a couple of more days ahead of time before a spike takes shape that it then points out it is obvious it is in actual fact a spike. Maybe it's just me that needs those extra days of fist pumping, yes, feeling. Maybe not. And hopefully this video will have given you the first insight to get excited about identifying a spike sooner than a mitten and before it is there suddenly out of nowhere, which can sometimes happen as well. I was trying to stay focused in this video. I hope my excitement didn't wash out anything that I said. So if you have any questions, please, of course, direct them in the comments. And if you have your fowls in spike or in bloom, anything Phalaenopsis, bring it on in the comments. Let's talk Phalaenopsis. <laughs> I'm so relieved that I can finally join in the conversation after the traumatic years pre-uploading videos. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Know that I appreciate your time and support. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, as always, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.